This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org slash give. We're broadcasting from COP28, the U.N. climate summit here in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, where a record 2,500 lobbyists are registered to attend this year, nearly four times as many as last year. They're from companies like Shell, Total, and ExxonMobil. They outnumber the delegations of every country except Brazil, which is set to host the summit in 2025, and this year's host, the United Arab Emirates delegation. The summit's presided over by the CEO of the UAE's national oil company, Sultan al-Jaber, who has said there's no science behind demands for the phase-out of fossil fuels to address the climate crisis. Earlier this week, activists addressed the massive number of lobbyists at the COP during a side event. This is Eric Nijguma from Kenya with Fridays for Future MAPA. Brenna Two Bears with the Indigenous Environmental Network, Drew Slatter, a Pacific Climate Warrior from Fiji. But first, David Tong with Oil Change International. You wouldn't invite arms dealers to a peace conference. And the oil lobbyists here at the climate conference must not stop this conference from succeeding in delivering a phase out of fossil fuels. The presence of the fossil fuel industry at uh, its climate negotiations shows the moral bankruptcy of the fossil fuel industry. Fossil fuel lobbyists should not be here. They weave a web of greed and sacrifice zones like the Dakota Access Pipeline. They have received over $3 billion from Bank of America which is the same bank that's also interested in the Energy Transition Accelerator, an ambitious initiative that was announced by the U.S. Climate Envoy a few days ago. We will not stand by while these false solutions are heralded as the solution to the climate crisis. There is only one solution to the climate crisis, decolonization and an indigenous just transition away from systems of extraction. Before this press conference, I was speaking briefly with a few other Pacific climate warriors about the sheer number of fossil fuel lobbyists present here. Um, and a well-known Pacific climate warrior, Brianna Fruin, uh, spoke to us about it, and she said it's because they're scared. Uh, there's more of them here because they know that the age of fossil fuels is coming to an end. It must come to an end. The people have spoken. The science has spoken. Um, all that's left is to ensure that these processes no longer allow them in the room so that our negotiators, our leaders can take the necessary steps to keep us below 1.5 degrees of heating. That last voice you just heard was Drew Slatter, Pacific Climate Warrior from Fiji. For more, we're joined by Rachel Rose Jackson. She moderated that event here at the UN Climate Summit. She's Director of Climate Research and Policy at Corporate Accountability, part of the Kick Big Polluters Out Coalition that just released their report, Record Number of Fossil Fuel Lobbyists at COP28. Welcome to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us. Thank you so much for having me. You know, we've just been talking about Gaza and what's happening there. And I'm wondering if you can talk about the Israeli bombardment of Gaza at this point. Nearly 16,000 people are dead. Um, the connection, if you will, between that and lobbyists here at the UN Climate Summit. So when it comes to the systemic injustices in the world, we can't look at these things in a vacuum. We have to zoom out and look at them globally. And when we do that, we can see very clearly that the same geopolitical powers, political elite, and even abusive corporations who are responsible for burning fossil fuels, delaying action, and fueling the climate crisis on one hand, are the same political elite and abusive corporations who are responsible for standing by and even enabling the genocide that's playing out in Gaza. And when it comes to genocide, there isn't a side. There's only the 16,000 and counting lives that have been lost without any justification. And it's the same thing with the climate crisis. There is no justification for the millions of lives that have already been lost and impacted simply because of the greed of polluters and global north governments who have enabled this crisis. 
crisis to happen. So these systemic injustices, they don't happen in a vacuum and they also have the same source. That also means they have the same solutions. And there is you know, no climate justice without human rights. And there's also no climate justice on occupied land. So everything that we're seeing here is so relevant to everything that's playing out in Gaza and in other places where genocide is happening around the world. It's the same problem and we need to hold the same people to account. You know, Rachel, when we ask people about the lobbyists who are here, everyone said you have to talk to Rachel Rose Jackson. So talk about this report that you came out with, how you figured out that there were thousands of lobbyists here. It was very interesting to hear David Tong when asked about lobbyists. Why can't they be here like anyone else? And he said, if you were holding a peace conference, would you invite arms manufacturers to it? I mean, it's exactly that, and I don't think it's just me. You know, this whole coalition, Kick Big Polluters Out, we're 450 organizations and networks around the world representing millions of people who are all united in challenging what's happening here in these halls and demanding an end of fossil fuel lobbyists and big polluters to write the rules of climate action. It's the same thing that, you know, as David Tong said, if your house is burning down, if it's on fire, do you hand the hose to the arsonist? No, but that's exactly what's happening here. So the number of uh, lobbyists, nearly 2,500, uh, we said at the beginning, it's equal, it's larger than any delegation here except the host now, UAE, they have something like 3,000, and the host going to be in two years, uh, Brazil. Exactly. And not only that, but there's a record-breaking number of fossil fuel lobbyists who are here at this talk. Last year in Sharm el-Sheikh, there were around 630 known fossil fuel lobbyists. The year before that, 500. So this year, there's a four times increase in the number of fossil fuel lobbyists here promoting a deadly fossil fuel agenda. Do you think it's related to who is president of the COP of the UN Climate Summit, uh, the Sultan al Jaber? It's definitely who is head of the, one of the largest oil companies in the world, ADNOC, the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company? It's, it's definitely impossible to ignore how front and center the fossil fuel influence is at this particular COP. I mean, as you just said, it travels all the way up to the highest levels. But this problem is as old as these climate talks are. You know, from the very inception, there have been no measures to protect these talks from fossil fuel industry influence. How do fossil fuel lobbyists affect the talks? Where are they allowed in? And where aren't they? They're allowed everywhere. They're allowed right behind us where we are. But more than that, they're allowed even in places where civil society doesn't have access to. These fossil fuel lobbyists are often given country delegation badges. So these pink badges you might see some people wearing, and that gets them into rooms that I and even you could never get into. It gives them direct access to the literal ears of the decision makers who are writing the rules of climate action. It gives them a seat at the head of the table and it, it doesn't even stop there. They're also literally bankrolling these climate talks. They're paying for these talks to happen. They're signing the checks. They're signing the dotted line of the outcomes that come out of these talks. So their fingerprints are all over what's happening here. I want to turn to uh, Brenna Two Bears. You had this side panel um, this week um, that was really interesting. Uh, Brenna is Diné, uh, Brenna Two Bears from the United States. Uh, she's with the Indigenous Environmental Network. <laughs> We are here today to address the climate crisis. So why was there twice as many fossil fuel lobbyists at COP26 than indigenous delegates? Why are we as indigenous people only allowed to have an observer status, but fossil fuel lobbyists are allowed to have direct access to parties? The more lobbyists that are here, the higher our emissions rise. And in a report released by the Center for Biological Diversity last month, the Biden administration has approved 17 massive fossil fuel projects estimated to release the same amount of emissions as 440 coal-fired power plants. The reason why this is so important is because for those of us who grew up on the Navajo Res, for those of us who didn't have paved roads in our homes, who didn't have running water or access to electricity, but we had these coal-fired power plants in our backyard, 
that number is preposterous. It's awful, and it breaks our hearts. I used to haul water to my grandfather's house. That same clean access to drinkable water would have been available to him if it hadn't been taken from the Navajo Aquifer, which is one of the most pristine sources of groundwater in the world, and transported to the Black Mesa coal mine in order to slurry coal to the Navajo Generating Station. Not only was it wasting so much water, about 4,400 acre uh, feet of groundwater a year since 1971, but it wasn't going to any of the communities that were on the Navajo reservation. Thankfully, because of the grassroots movement from the Hopi and the Diné, who are out there in Arizona and the southwest area of the United States, we were able to shut down the Black Mesa coal mine in 2019 and we were able to stop the use of that Navajo generating station, uh, being able to slurry that coal in 2001. That's Brenna Two Bears with the Indigenous Environmental Network, and this is Pacific Climate Warrior Drew Slatter speaking at the side event here at the UN COP Summit uh, on Monday. We need to remove fossil fuel lobbyists from climate negotiations if the Pacific is to have a shot at survival. And that shot, it is possible. It often feels like it's not, but it is possible. We can achieve a phase out of fossil fuels. We can achieve 100% renewable energy. We can achieve a fair and efficient finance package for the energy transition in the Pacific. But the obscene number of big polluters at these climate negotiations threatens that. In Glasgow, fossil fuel lobbyists outnumbered Pacific delegates 12 to 1. Uh, if I'm not wrong, last year the number rose to 15 to 1. And the number this year is expected to be even higher. Drew Slatter, Pacific Climate Warrior from Fiji. Our guest is Rachel Rose Jackson, who pulled everyone together to talk about the detrimental effect of the lobbyists here uh, at the UN Climate Summit. In fact, right behind me, you may hear the noise getting higher and higher. People are lining up because uh, Sultan Al Jaber is just about to hold a news conference, or at least to speak, Rachel. Yeah, he is, and you know, as I alluded to earlier, it's for sure fair to say that the fossil fuel influence could not be more obvious at these talks. But we have to remember that these talks have been co-opted to serve the fossil fuel agenda since they began. There have been no measures since day one to protect these talks to ensure that they deliver the action that people on the planet deserve. You know, whether the cup is in Poland, the coal capital of the world, or the United States, the world's largest historical emitter of fossil fuels, and I might add, the world's largest obstructor at these talks from a government perspective. These cops are infested with fossil fuel influence. You're a specialist on pushing tobacco on the world. Now you're talking about climate. What is the model that was used? We just have about 30 seconds. It's important to understand that the UN climate talks are the exception not the norm. Other UN bodies, institutions around the world, they all begin with making sure that there is insulation from keeping the source of the problem out of solving the problem. That's happened with the UN Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, as you mentioned, but it has never happened here. So now we are so far into the process, we are running out of time. We must kick big polluters out. We must end their ability to write the rules of climate action. We must end their ability to bankroll these climate talks and reset the system so that it can finally end fossil fuels and advance real solutions and save millions of lives that don't need to be lost. Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org give.